Hey everybody, Johnny Garrett's here with another little uh, little talk, little uh, uh, little issue I've been thinking about, and that's been um, corporate teams and how I feel they are kind of systemically ruining America. Now, when I when I say that, what I mean by that is that um, the way that corporate teams uh, impose their will over a company seems to get in the way of production. It seems to get in the way of uh, employee uh, auto autonomy um it makes you feel like they're reaching more and more and more into your freedoms and making it so that at least in my experience feeling like i am a trapped rat and um for me to do something as simple as texting my girlfriend i love her checking on the kids or something like that puts me at risk of uh, losing my livelihood and having to go find another job um i know that might be just a little bit uh not like a big deal but I'm sure there's plenty of examples that a lot of people have about rules that they feel are a little unfair or uh, over-policing. So I wrote a little script today about most of the uh, issues I'm talking about here. So I'm just going to run through and then maybe give some commentary a little bit if, I, if anything comes to mind. But I do need to keep up with my daily content strategy. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so... I feel there's disconnection and indifference. So one of the biggest problems with corporate management is their disconnection from the frontline employees. Executives often sit in their cushy offices, far removed from the day-to-day -day challenges faced by the troops, faced by the workers. They only act quickly when their existence is threatened, when their job's on the line. If something is brought to their attention, that is genuinely their problem. They don't take problems of other employees like us, us little guys, as seriously as they take problems that are their own. And that is not a judgment in so much as a just pointing out a, a problem based on my experience, a factual experience. Uh, I, I've noticed that corporate slash managers seem to only care about things that are made their problems, not necessarily your problems. If you know, if you're a comp if you work at a company, if you have problems at the company and you bring it to the attention of your supervisor or your manager. In my mind, I feel like you have to, like, in my mind, I feel like if an issue is brought to me and I'm a supervisor and a manager, my employee who's a part of the team is having a problem and needs to have that problem addressed for them to get back to work, to work at full capacity, full productivity. But a lot of the times when I've talked to managers about issues, unless I've just like completely blown my top off or nagged and nagged and nagged, where it got to the point where they just felt like their, their piece is being uh, agitated, that then they would only do something because they're afraid or threatening to quit. Also, I've had to threaten to quit a million times to try to get things done. Uh, but if I try to be polite and patient, then it seems that um, managers take their time. And I think it, to, to be fair, um, when, man, when I say take their time, uh, it's not necessarily because they don't care. I understand also thinking and reflecting and reading and whatever about um, this type of situation and comparing experiences with other employees is that the main thing that I feel prevents managers from really reacting and responding to issues is that there's like one manager for like every 30 people and they are, they're split and stretched out. And again, that just kind of feeds back into the corporate office and maybe they're just trying to cut costs or something like that by not properly staffing their management team or, you know, putting too much load on one person. Cause every, every team I've ever worked on, and anywhere, there's always like a group of people who everybody else has to pick up slack for, but because they want to keep the tallies filled on the employment, they need to, uh, they don't fire people who technically check all the boxes, but they're not contributing as much or like if uh, things are going poorly with that staff. Number two would be, I believe that corporate offices are totalitarian and authoritarian. And I feel like just that in and of itself seems like it's inefficient on its face. I believe corporate teams operate like authoritarian regimes with power concentrated in the hands of a few. I feel this, com this creates a toxic work environment where employees have no say in the decision-making. I'm not saying that we should be able to do whatever we want, but I feel like there's no negotiation. It's, it's their way or the highway, which means like if it makes the um, company feel like a one-sided a slave owner, a slave to slave owner relationship instead of a uh, team. Rules also seem imposed arbitrarily. And again, with no room for negotiation, there's no exceptions. It's just my way or the highway. 
and this this stifles me and makes me feel like a, a trap rat. Um, so then number three would be micromanagement and arbitrary rules. I feel like a large issue with corporate teams is they're micromanaging every little decision that's made throughout the day. Uh, I, I, I think they love to just they they think. They, you know, they write things down on pieces of paper and they think that it's going to, you know, they have a set. I don't know how they, they come up with some rules and policies and stuff like that. But things that don't have to do with job performance, like where you clock in or out for break, they have the same weight as if, like, I didn't uh, show up to work and actually work that day. It feels like, like, if I miss punch somewhere and that type of thing, then I feel like that is just as much effect as my job. So when you have rules like that that are punished the same as like productivity. It makes me take away effort from focusing on my job and just uh, splits my focus into t- trying to make sure I'm not stepping on any landmines that um, impo- like on any landmines that may jeopardize my job. And my um, uh, number four is inefficiency of a centralized management team. I feel like centralized management teams create inefficiencies that slow everything down. Employees on the ground have to navigate a complex chain of command to get things done. I feel top-down approaches, delays, decision-making, and hampers productivity, creating bottlenecks that affects the entire organization. And then to tie into that, I feel like when you have multiple layers of um, inefficiencies in a business that aren't your fault, it gets in the way of you negotiating for higher wages because it's not your fault that you're not being productive me, for instance, I try to push boundaries and try to push my OEE uh, uh, overall equipment efficiency through the roof. But I feel like when teams get in my way, then they use that as evidence that I'm not worth what I'm worth when I try to make pitches to ask for more money. Um, and I believe that is because of a top-down approach instead of more uh, autonomy to the ones in the field. The ones who would know better. Uh, number five is I feel corporate teams dehumanize hourly workers. I feel like they other them. I feel like one of the most troubling issues is dehumanization of hourly workers. I feel like they're treated as numbers on a graph, expendable resources rather than people and valued team members. I feel like this harms their well being and also they take that harm home. And that harm affects their families, which then bleeds into the communities. So then if you have a, um, a poor business operating in a town, I feel like it damages the whole town. Um, this is kind of like an unmeasurable thing, but I just feel like the, the uh, basic premise of that is true. Hourly workers often face harsh working conditions, minimal job security, lack of respect for management. They're the backbone of many businesses. Yet they're treated as if their contributions don't matter. They care, they're replaceable. Whatever. Um, it's not. It's not that we are replaceable. We're all replaceable. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be. We should be treated like kings or anything along the lines of that. But I just wish I felt from teams when they make their decisions that I would be able to tell that they were seriously considering our livelihoods and our well-being into decisions. And I, I'm sure, I hope a lot of people can relate. Number six is, uh, I feel management teams, corporate teams, uh, fail to innovate and spend time uh, obsessing about managing risk. I feel many large corporations fail to innovate due to risk-averse management. I feel they have a fear of liability, which leads to overly cautious rules that stifle progress. Often, these risk management decisions are made by people disconnected from realities of the workplace. For instance, one example of a company I used to work for during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I was told to wear, I was, it's one of the rules was to wear safety glasses all the time. And then we were also told to mask up, which is fine. I thought it was good, you know, but when we would drive onto old semis, and then drive back onto the uh, factory floor, our uh, safety glasses would fog up, causing a safety issue. And then I was reprimanded uh, a few times because 
my safety glasses would fog up, causing me being able una- unable to see effectively. And when I would remove them to try to drive, drive safely, I would often be um, reprimanded or scolded because I wasn't wearing my safety glasses. My solution here is to essentially sit in my hands and wait, wait for technology solutions like AI, hopefully to form and come out to the hands of the public so that we can start to generate more businesses. So stuff in the gig economy can potentially become more lucrative for people so that people aren't forced to work for corporate entities anymore. I think that small businesses need more tools to grow so that we can decentralize the markets away from authoritarian regimes like corporate offices um, because it just only takes centralized power in any one location. It only takes a little bit of mismanagement to cause a social Fukushima um, or a social social Chernobyl in a way. Um, so I'm just hopeful for I'm hopeful for the future. Uh, something like ChatGPT and Adobe Photoshop, stuff like that. These like tools that allow creators to create so easily. I'm not one to write home about, obviously, but I'm saying somebody like me who's working 46 hours a week can get on the computer and get content uploaded every single day does breathe a little bit of hope for the future. Uh, Thank you for watching. Feel free to do whatever you want, whenever you want. I don't really care. I just um, need to get my videos done. Uh, Thank you for watching. Uh, Have a nice day. Hope Hope you enjoyed.